never lost our faith, never lost our joy. And God, we thank you for bringing us through many trials and tribulations. Thank you for being a God that loves us enough to send more peace, more joy, more hope to refill us and restore us that we may continue to be so in light in this earth that we may continue to compel men and women and boys and girls to come to you. Now God, as we continue in our worship experience and we yield ourselves over to you to hear from you today, we say, speak, Lord, for your servants, we are listening. We came to hear a word from you today to help us make it through the noise, to help us to hold on to our peace, to help us hold on to our joy, to help us to hold on to our hope. So God, we say, speak now, Lord God, that when we leave this place, we will be encouraged, strengthened, renewed, restored and revived. Now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seat to the presence of the Lord. We truly honor the Lord today. We thank God for the angel of this house, Dr. Hennessy. Amen. Elder Tawana Hennessy in their absence. It's truly an honor to be able to share the word of God with you on today. We thank God for Pastor Hennessy for being the lead servant, not only in this house, but in the community. Amen. Amen. He's really showing us how to lead and how to follow. Showing us how to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And so I thank God for this opportunity and to all Elder Tobert and Elder Wilder. Thank you so much to the deacons and to all of the official staff of this great church. It is an honor to be here this morning to share the word of God with you on today. Thank God for my mother who was here with us on today. Truly grateful to God for all that the Lord is doing in our midst. Just for a few moments, I want to call your attention to the book of John. Gospel of John. And when you get home, you feel free to read the entire eighth chapter of John. I'm only going to focus my attention on uh, one or two verses there to raise our text on today. The tone of chapter eight of St. John is somewhat argumentative. Jesus was teaching in the temple and he was telling his listeners things about himself, his relation to the Father, about the glory of God. He was teaching them about how to follow the Sabbath laws, teaching them about how important it is to have knowledge of who God is. He wanted them to know that the living water of the Spirit was what we were going to need to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. He was talking to them about his coming death. He was talking to them about true light for the world. He was also teaching them about the standards for judgment and the essence of truth. Verse 37, it, it was clear that, that the people that were listening, they could not or they chose not to understand what Jesus was talking about. He tells them in verse 37, he says, you don't have room in your hearts for my message. How many of us today have, have, have cleared out space in our hearts? to actually receive the message of the Lord. How many of us have, have really taken up the time to do that self-examination where we have cleaned out, swept out, mopped out, uh, bleached out, tied out, shouted out, all of those things that are in our heart that, 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 that God is talking to us about today. 
Look at verse 31. This is where I am going to focus all of our attention on for the next few moments. Verse 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. The word of the Lord is blessed for the hearers and the doers of his word. Jesus gives an if-then clause. An if-then clause contains a condition. If this is done, then this will be the result. Understand that the little word if, I-F, is a big content in the kingdom of God. The word represents an invitation to. The Bible says, Second Chronicles, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, that's an invitation. Then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal their land. That's a promise and a result. Freedom will never force itself on us. However, we must respond to God's invitation to act in his complete freedom. My message today is freedom in Jesus. Freedom in Jesus. This if-then clause is not to be confused with any formula of rules or regulations. Jesus never said, if you pray 30 minutes five times a day and only miss Sunday school or Bible class twice a year, then you will be free. That's being religious. Jesus is not about religion. He is about relationship. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is not about religion. He is about relationship. Jesus said, if we abide in him and his word abides in us, whatever we ask will be given. That's a mighty, mighty small word with a gigantic concept. Amen. If. So, so let, let's look at here. Let's look at here. The Bible says, so the thing here that we must do is what? Continue in his word. To continue in his word or his teaching is to abide or to stay to endure. Watch this. If it's raining outside and you are under an umbrella, you are covered from getting wet. But when you come from under the umbrella and the rain is still falling, you will what? Get wet. If we are truly his disciples, we will stay under the covering of his word. one who is taught, one who follows a discipline or teaching of another. Therefore, it is fundamentally imperative that unless we continue in Jesus' teaching, we are not his disciples. And if you are not his disciples, then we are abounding in sin. We are bound by sin. And can I tell you that Sin just does not consist of the sin that we hear so much talked about in the church. You all know those sins we always hear in the church. Don't lie, don't gossip, don't backbite, don't commit adultery, don't fornicate, don't steal, don't, y'all know those sins. But as I was reflecting over the week, Sister Nicole, the reason why I couldn't give you my text on Thursday is because God was dealing with me on this thing about the sins of the church. 
See, all of those sins that we, we hear about, the world knows about those sins too. The world knows it it, it, it's not right to commit adultery. The world knows it ain't right to lie. Let the president get on TV and lie. Let, let the governor get caught in adultery. The, everybody's going to know it. The world's going to say it. But this morning, I didn't. I know we're on the radio. I didn't come to talk to the world. I can't talk to the body of Christ. I can't even talk to the believers. So this sin that, that God pressed upon me is found in Scripture. And it, it has nothing to do with don't do. It has everything to do with do. Now we are believers of Jesus Christ, right? We are his disciples, right? We are his followers, right? Well, there's a scripture in the Bible that we fall short of doing. And when we don't do it, we are sinning. Oh, come on, somebody. The Bible tells us that though those that are strong must bear the infirmities of the weak. How many times is it that we see our brothers and sisters falling short, missing the mark, erroring according to the word of God, and we turn our heads? We don't say nothing because they groan just like I'm grown. That's their business. We walk away from it. We don't say nothing because they know, well, they know us, right? right? But the Bible tells us those of us that are strong must do what? Bear the infirmities of the weak with the spirit of meekness, considering it to be us ourselves. Amen. See, that, that's where the church has fallen short. That's where the church has missed the mark. That is where the church has fallen in slavery to sin. I knew I wasn't going to get no amen. That's all right. That's all right. Because don't nobody want to confess to the fact of being a sinner. But my Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if you say you have not sinned, the Bible says you are a liar and there's no truth in you. this morning just, just to tell us that we must abide in the word of God. We cannot afford to sin. We cannot afford to lose our relationship with the Lord. We have to help each other be accountable to the word that we hear every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday. We have to hold each other accountable to following the word of God. That's why people leave the church because we refuse to hold folks accountable. We think it's the pastor's job just to preach and teach, but don't you know we are the salt and light of the world? And they must see the word of God in us. They must see the word of God in us. Freedom, freedom is not a lack of of restraint that allows one to fulfill any selfish desire, but indeed freedom takes place in Jesus and in a relationship with him. As we abide in Christ, we are released from the chains of the world and free to be all that God created us to be. We were created to walk in fellowship with God, but sin, my brothers and sisters, hinders that relationship by enslaving us in a separated life from God. Jesus Christ is the only one who can set us free to enjoy the life as a child of God instead of living as a slave to this world. John 8 and 38 says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you are free indeed. What are you free from? You're free from the bondage of sin. The very definition of a captive is one who is confined. That's exactly what we were. 
You and I were prisoners held under the bondage of sin. We were held captive by the impulses of sin, controlled by the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We had no power to overcome the influence of sin. Sin was our ruler, and it held us captive. Whatever sin wanted, that's what we did. Romans 6 and 16, the New Living Translation says, don't you realize that you were a slave? You have to choose to obey the word of God. We cannot have two masters. We must serve one and hate the other. Love one, hate the other. Serve one, deny the other. And this sin that the church has been living in, not holding each other accountable to the word that we receive every day. Church, we gotta restore each other. We fall short of God's glory every day. And we've got to encourage each other to be steadfast, to be unmovable, to always abound in the will of the Lord. When we were born again, something beautiful happened. My Bible said all things passed away and all things became new. God gave us a new nature and more importantly, he filled us with his Holy Spirit. So we no longer walk under the control of a sinful nature. We have been set free. Because of the Holy Ghost living in us, we are free. Free from the bondage of sin. Those things that we used to do, we don't do anymore. Those places we used to go, we don't go anymore. We have been set free. Free from the penalty of sin. Today, my brothers and sisters, we can rejoice because we have Christ and we have eternal life. We no longer have to pay the penalty of sin. We will never be separated from the love of God. When Jesus Christ comes into our life, we are free from guilt and shame. This is one of the biggest weapons of the enemy, encouraging us to look back at the shameful moments of our lives. Once Jesus Christ has set us free, we are free. There is freedom in Jesus on today. Freedom in Jesus on today. That's why it's important, my brothers and sisters, that we help each other along the way. We must encourage each other. We must build each other up. We must speak words of affirmation to each other. Don't let your brothers and sisters get in a place that they are separated from God. Tap them on the shoulder. Pull that coattail. Lovingly, with gentleness, with meekness, with humbleness. Our churches should be full. But the, they're out there in the world today. When Jesus sets us free, we live abundantly. You cannot have an abundant life, a loving relationship with God or anyone else for that matter, bound by guilt and shame of the past or bound by the penalty of sin. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have a life and that you may have life more abundantly. When we are free in Jesus, we are free to serve. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do a good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When we are free from sin, we are free to have peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace that will keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. We will have the shalom of God, which is a wholeness, which is completeness, which is success, which is fulfillment, which is harmony, which is security, which is well-being. When we are free, 
we are free from fear. God says, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. Gave you power, love, and a sound mind. We are free to have joy. Joy, unspeakable joy. Full of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Free indeed. Free indeed. It is up to us, my brothers and sisters, to help each other live in this freedom. It's our responsibility. It is our duty to help each other live in this freedom. No longer be bound by sin. The word says us for us to do. Those of us that are strong in the faith must help bear the infirmities of those that are weak. The Bible tells us that there are some of us in the house that are weak. And those of us that are strong, we walk past them and we smile, how you doing? Never stopping long enough to see the heart or to see the tears that they've wiped away. Because everybody don't know how to silence the noise, Elder. But we know that are strong, we know how. But do we ever stop to help? Our brothers and sisters find peace, find joy, find strength and hope. Most of all, find their freedom in Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for freedom in Jesus today. We thank you for setting us free. We are free indeed. And now as we leave from this place and not your presence, Lord God, help us to be encouragers one to another. Help us lift up each other. Help us to build up each other. Help us to hold each other accountable to your word. God, we thank you for freedom. We thank you for the freedom to choose to love you today. Choose to honor you and to obey your word. Let your word, Father God, dwell in us, live in us. And let us be faithful to obey and follow what your word has given us. It's in thy son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen.